Hi there. So this video is the first in a planned series of videos uh, where, we are, where we are going to design and build a do-it-yourself 8-bit computer. Uh, the basic specifications uh, that we have uh, for this computer are it is going to use the 6809 CPU, uh, one of the classic 8-bit CPUs. Uh, it's going to have 32K of RAM. Uh, 28K of ROM, uh, there will be uh, 4K of, of uh, the computer's memory space reserved for interfacing with some uh, I.O. devices, including a serial port, uh, a timer counter chip, uh, some GPIO uh, support, uh, support for interrupts, uh, a um, keyboard, uh, specifically a matrix encoded keyboard, um, and then uh, support for some uh, for a sound chip and uh, a graphics chip. And essentially what we're shooting for is something that would be roughly equivalent to some of the classic 8-bit computers of the mid to late 70s, early 80s, things like the TRS-80 color computer, Commodore 64, Apple II, uh, those kinds of machines. We, we should be able to, uh, at least at a hardware level, uh, come up with something roughly comparable to those. Uh, as far as the planned software support, uh, we will definitely have a ROM monitor that allows uh, a host PC to connect to and communicate with this 8-bit uh, computer uh, via a serial port. Uh, this is going to be useful for uh, the initial stages of the project where we are just trying to bring up the hardware uh, interface with peripherals and just be confident that uh, things are working. Um, uh, later, uh, we, I'm thinking maybe we will try to add a fourth interpreter uh, to the system. Um, the uh, sort of classic computers of the era tended to have a basic interpreter uh, built into the firmware of the machine. Uh, I'm not a big fan of basic, so I'm kind of leaning in the direction of maybe trying to go with fourth. Uh, and definitely we should try to write some, some simple games for the system. Uh, I am planning on adding uh, sound and graphics hardware that, that should certainly be capable of doing some, you know, some basic uh, video game kind of uh, programs. All right, so who is this series intended for? And why, um, why might you want to, to watch it? Um, well, certainly um, I really intend this for, uh, to be relevant for anybody who is interested in uh, you know, computing, uh, especially retro computing, you know, especially if you are perhaps nostalgic for uh, the classic computers of the, the 70s and 80s. Um, I, I would say having some knowledge of electronics uh, and or programming uh, will be helpful for this video series, but is not really essential. So I'm trying to target this as a, a series where I will cover at least the basics um, you know, in each video. And, you know, perhaps we won't get to the point where it is makes 100% sense, you know, if you're coming from a, a background where you don't have a lot of prior experience, but at the very least, it should give you a grounding and a foundation that will allow you to seek in, uh, you know, further information elsewhere. And there are a lot of good learning resources about, you know, computers and digital electronics that may be helpful um, in uh, going a bit deeper on some of these topics. But I am definitely aiming to really show how this is um, how this project is going to be built uh, from the ground up. And uh, in terms of why you might want to watch these videos, well, certainly this is a very good opportunity to learn about digital electronics. Uh, so especially if you come from uh, purely a software background, and that's definitely my background, um, uh, it turns out that uh, digital electronics is actually uh, pretty accessible. Uh, and, and it's a lot of fun, and, and that's something we'll focus on quite a bit. Um, we will certainly be covering a lot of uh, fundamental concepts in computer architecture, and especially when you uh, look at sort of how the hardware of, this, of the system is organized and how the, uh, the host CPU in the system communicates with all of these uh, other devices in the system is, a, you know, that's actually quite relevant for um, understanding computer architecture and especially things like embedded systems and microcontrollers. Uh, but most importantly, um, working on this type of project uh, is really, really fun. Uh, I have had a blast uh, working on this, and I'm hoping that you will have a lot of fun too. Okay, so in the remainder of this video, I am going to uh, demonstrate the prototype I have implemented so far, uh, and then uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what uh, subsequent videos in the series will cover. Okay, so here is the 
prototype that I've built so far. Um, you can see it's built on a whole bunch of solderless breadboards. I just buy the, the really cheap ones from eBay uh, that work, that has worked okay for me so far. Um, so in terms of the hardware that we have uh, on the prototype, uh, here is the CPU. I'm actually using the Hitachi 6309 uh, which is a CMOS uh, variation of the 6809. You, you can put a, an actual 6809 in here as well. It'll work fine. Um, this is uh, up here the glue logic uh, that does the address decoding and generates the chip enables to allow the uh, the CPU to select uh, you know, any of the various uh, peripheral devices that are interfaced in the system. Uh, there are some buffers. Here's the address bus buffers. This is the data bus buffer. This is a buffer for some of the... Uh, um, the CPU bus signals. Um, here is the RAM chip uh, and the ROM chip. Uh, the RAM chip is a just a just a 32k static RAM. Uh, the ROM chip is an EEPROM. Um, these are the first peripherals here that um, that I interface with the system. This is the uh, the UART chip. That's the serial chip to support serial communications. I'm using the Hitachi uh, 6350. Uh, again, it's a CMOS variation of the uh, 6850 uh, part, which is the sort of the traditional one, uh, you could substitute uh, 6850 here. Uh, the counter timer chip here is an uh, 82C54. Um, uh, that's used both to generate timer interrupts and then also to uh, provide a clock to uh, provide some flexibility in the baud rate generation for the serial chip. Uh, this is the um, this is an 82C55A uh, peripheral interface. Uh, provides some GPIO pins. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of using them to drive these LEDs as just a status indication. Uh, there's also some pins on here that are used for kind of internal uh, system uh, tasks. Uh, and then um, other hardware we have here. Here is the interrupt handling hardware. Um, the Main, well, that interrupt handling hardware does two things. Um, it provides uh, multiple um, interrupt uh, device interrupt inputs. Uh, the, the CPU natively only has three um, uh, sort of interrupt inputs. Uh, here we use, a pri we use a priority encoder to provide actually seven hardware interrupts that are done in a uh, prioritized fashion. Uh, there's also a dual uh, D-type flip-flop chip here that handles the conversion of edge-triggered interrupts to level-triggered interrupts. Um, the uh, CPU natively only has support for level-triggered interrupts, and the timer counter, for example, uh, the produces edge-triggered interrupts. So, so there's a little bit of conversion here. Um, this part up here, um, and there's actually some room in the breadboard to stick in a, 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 a connector here. That is the uh, interfacing hardware for the keyboard. Uh, I am using a Commodore 16 keyboard, uh, which is a just a typical matrix encoded keyboard. And uh, the hardware here uh, essentially sends the scan codes from the keyboard to the CPU uh, via this FIFO memory chip. Uh, other hardware we have is, uh, this is the, uh, the sound chip, uh, Philips SAA 1099, uh, and the audio is output via the standard uh, headphone jack. And the most recent addition to the uh, circuitry uh, on the machine um, is uh, this part down here. Uh, which is the uh, video hardware. I'm using the uh, Texas Instruments TMS9918A uh, video chip that was used in the uh, TI994A uh, computer. It was also used in the uh, MSX series of computers uh, that were popular in Japan. Uh, it's, you know, one, it's a reasonable chip and uh, among the chips, graphics chips of the era, uh, this one is the one that's kind of like the least amount of pain to actually use. Uh, I have not actually um, tested the video circuitry yet because I haven't written any firmware for it, but uh, the system does power up with it uh, interfaced and it's not drawing uh, excessive current. So uh, it's um, I I'm reasonably hopeful that when I do write some firmware, it will work uh, correctly. And then there's a little bit of uh, circuitry uh, here to uh, output composite video via this uh, uh, RCA connector. Okay, so uh, to wrap up, let's let's talk about um, what what's going to be coming next in this video series. So uh, I am definitely planning on doing a video on uh, basic electronics and prototyping, basically uh, how to how to design simple circuits. 
how to build them and test them on a breadboard. Um, and then there will be, um, you know, at least two, if not more, videos on, on digital electronics. And I'm definitely planning on talking about uh, combinational logic, so your basic uh, logic gates and, and Boolean functions, and then also stateful logic, things like uh, flip-flops and, and clocks, and uh, how, to, how to design state into uh, a simple digital circuit. Uh, and then at that point, I think we'll be ready to start talking about the overall system design uh, and you know, planning a memory map uh, for the system, and then we can start talking about uh, the glue logic and build a basic framework that will uh, allow us to build arbitrary devices into the system. And you know, we'll pretty much just go from there. Uh, as far as the time frame for these videos, uh, you know, I, I do this in my spare time. I am completely new to video production. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly uh, when the next video will be out or how many there will be or how long this entire series will take. Uh, I could, I should expect that it will be, uh, you know, weeks and months. Uh, and, you know, maybe if I do really well, I'll get a video out every two or three weeks. Uh, it's hard to say. We'll see how it goes. But I am planning on, you know, sticking with this. And, you know, I, would, I really would like to see this, this series through uh, to its conclusion. So um, that's, uh, that's what uh, I'm going to be doing. So I will see you in the next video.